Today, we're gonna glue up some 3D prints. And yeah, this might sound easier on paper than it actually is. If all your printing is ABS, then you're gonna have a really easy time. ABS and other styrene-based materials, super easy to stick together. Uh, you can use basically anything. But when you're printing with PLA, that already gets a bit trickier. And with PTG, almost nothing is going to stick. So today, I wanna try out seven different adhesives um, that are common, that you might have at home already, and that are relatively safe to use. Um, we're gonna try PLA, we're gonna try PTG. For good measure, we're also throwing in resin prints because resin 3D printing is a process that essentially glues, it adheres the individual layers together, while PLA, PTG, FDM 3D printing is a welding process. So those are two different things, and one of them might be better for adhesives than the other. I think resin is gonna be super easy to glue up, but that's something that we're just gonna to have to find out. And speaking of resins, uh, today's sponsor, Soriatech. Soriatech's Sculpt Ultra Resin is a high-performance ceramic reinforced resin that comes with some super interesting and unique properties. It can stand up to temperatures up to 220 degrees Celsius, which means you could even use it as an injection molding master. It absorbs very little moisture and is resistant to many chemicals while still being super easy to print. I just used the standard profile for Soriatech Sculpt on my SL1S and it came out perfect on the first try. So if you're looking for a high performance composite resin, uh, check out Soriatech Sculpt Ultra or any of their other resins for day-to-day -day printing. You can find all the links in the video description below and thanks again to Soriatech for sponsoring this video. So originally I was gonna print all these Philoween inspired uh, sample parts for the filaments uh, on my Voron 2.4 sitting behind me here. That thing is really great when it comes to just cranking out parts like a madman. But apparently it didn't like the studio move too much and after a couple prints, it's got some pretty bad layer skips. Um, so I had to go back to old reliable Prusa Mark III. I'm just finishing up the last couple prints as we speak. These parts are all done with 40% infill, uh, three perimeters, extra top bottom solid layers. So we don't want the part to fail, we want the glue joint to fail. So what I did is I printed a couple of the standard Philoene testing samples um, so we can test uh, bench strength and the impact resistance of each material by itself. And then I also printed these parts split in half at the fault line. So these parts are printed pre-split and the glue is all that's gonna be holding them together. So of course, one of the challenges with 3D prints is that they're not always going to fit perfectly together. You're always going to have a bit of a gap that you'll need to fill. So I've printed two different variations of all these parts. I've got one set that sits together perfectly flat and I've printed another set that has a controlled radius at the joint that sits tight at the center and then opens up to a one millimeter gap around the edge. So that's really gonna be a good benchmark as to how good these adhesives are when it comes to filling the gaps that you're just naturally gonna have with 3D prints. The resin test parts, those were all done on the Anycubic M3 Plus. That's the resin printer that I'm testing right now. And I was like, hey, why not go with that? It has a larger bed so I can print more parts at once. So the resin prints actually completed much faster than the filament prints. So for the adhesives that I'll be using, I've got pretty much the whole range here. And these are ones that I'm comfortable using. So we've got the classics, we've got hot glue, we've got some super glue, we've got uh, acrylic two component glue. So this is not epoxy, this is acrylic. Um, I'm also throwing in JB Weld for the memes. But we've got a couple outliers. We've got VHB tape. Uh, this is Scotch or 3M tape that you'd know from GoPros, for example. So let's get these parts prepared and let's get them glued up. And I can tell you a bit more about each of these adhesives uh, and how I think they're gonna perform while we do that. So starting with the hot glue, you've all used this, you've all know this, and a lot of people actually dislike hot glue with a passion, and I don't get that, I really like it. Of course, the challenge is that it does get soft when it gets hot again, so this is not gonna be something you can just leave out in your car, but I find that it makes for a really good hybrid between a pure adhesive like super glue and a gap filling and caulking material um, like the SMX, so you can spend gaps with the hot glue. So importantly for this, I'm gonna let it get really hot, I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes, and then we can glue all these parts together. 
Next up with the super glue, this is the opposite end of the spectrum. Super glue typically is very thin, so it is not great at spanning gaps and it only hardens once you force out all the air from the gaps. So um, it really wants to be a super thin film. This might work really well with these square ends, but I think we're gonna have a bit of a trouble with the rounded over samples. So I'm also adding in some uh, gap filler here. So this is basically just a fine sand that allows the super glue to build up some bulk and it also allows the super glue to harden immediately Immediately once it soaks through the sand. So next up for the fix all crystal, um, this is going to be really good at filling gaps because it is sort of a hybrid between a caulk and a construction adhesive. It hardens to a, you know, to, to really more of a rubber than a hard adhesive like the super glue. So this is probably going to do really well for impacts, but I'm not sure if it will actually stick to our 3D printed materials. Next up for our two component materials. So we've got this Weldix Multipower 3 Beige. Uh, this is an MMA adhesive, so this is an acrylic two-part material, um, similar to what 3D printer resins are made of, but this is a two-part stuff that hardens by mixing the materials and not an acrylic that hardens by activating the UV sensitive stuff as in 3D printer resin. This does stick extremely well to lots and lots of stuff and makes for a really strong glue joint. But again, I don't know if it's going to stick to PTG all that well. So similar to the Weldix, we've also got JB Weld. You kind of have to include this when you're doing adhesives. I don't think it's going to do that much better than just general purpose epoxy, especially considering the price that you're paying. JB Weld sort of is a specialty imports item here in Germany, and we would use something like uh, Uhu Endfest, which is uh, the meme adhesive here in Germany. VHB tape honestly is a bit of a wild card. I've seen it stick extremely well to some surfaces and others it just falls off. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna heat it up a bit with my hot air reflow station. This does take a while to fully stick to your materials too. So as with all these other adhesives, we're gonna give it 24 hours to fully stick before we test it. And lastly, the 3D printer resin. I'm using Soriatec Blue here. I think this is gonna perform similarly to the other resins or epoxy adhesives, but because this is not a two-part adhesive, but one that hardens with UV light, I'm gonna give it a flash of UV light to harden it in the joint. Hey, uh, Tom, hey, uh, your microphone is out of battery. Yeah, I don't think he realizes. So um, I guess I can tell you about which of these adhesives worked and which didn't. Starting with one that actually did not work at all, and that is the 3D printer resin. Uh, the problem here is simply that it, it doesn't cure all the way. So I put it into the Anycubic Wash and Cure and let it sit in there for a couple of minutes, but I only ever got a one millimeter ring around the edge that fully cured and everything on the inside uh, remained liquid no matter how much UV light I threw at it. So this, you know, in addition to being very hard to work with, is just not a great choice for an adhesive. Maybe if you have like a really tiny gap uh, that you can fully immerse with UV light, but in this case, it just didn't work. What really worked well though, are the two-part epoxies or MMA adhesives. So the Weldix and the JB Weld. Both of these look really nice. They were super easy to work with. They had just the right consistency to get a good amount of squeeze out and they nicely filled the gaps. The JB Weld still feels like it's got a bit of tack to it. You can still like press a ridge into it um, with your fingernail. Uh, the Weldix is a lot harder, but I think both of these are sufficiently cured. The hot glue and the fix all were also super easy to work with. Uh, the hot glue especially was very fast as well because you just, you press it together, you wait for it to cool off and you're done. And both of these also filled up the gaps very nicely, both on the zero clearance gaps and on the one millimeter clearance ones. The VHB tape, this one was interesting. It felt really nice while working with it. I was really surprised by how much I could squeeze it together and fill out that one millimeter gap. But it looks like it has actually pulled back a bit from the ones that have the curvature to them. So now we only get a very small contact patch at the very center of that joint, uh, while the ones that were flat are fully covered. So I don't think that's gonna make for the strongest of joints, but we're gonna see in the testing. And lastly, the super glue. Uh, the super glue actually, you know, it, it worked rather well. It was a bit of a mess to work with. The flat zero clearance joints were, of course, super easy to work with. Uh, you just put in a bit of glue and you press it together and it's done. The ones with the gap, I did have to use a lot of filler, but because the super glue itself runs out of the joint rather quickly and the filler is also very, you know, flow happy, um, 
It was a bit tricky to work with. In the end, I decided to smear the mix between the super glue and the filler into the joint with my glove. That also got a bit of buildup on the outside, um, so I'm gonna have to sand that off before we get testing, otherwise we just have a much larger joint than the others, just to make it fair. So let's get those super glue samples ready for testing and then we can engage in some destruction. Man, look at him, look at him struggling for words. And we're done. I mean, just look at this carnage. This is uh, this is quite some data. So I've had a look through uh, what we got as far as results go, and I could put these all into nice graphs, but the thing is, those wouldn't tell the whole story. So I'm going to try to to summarize my results and what we found here. Uh, basically, we have two groups, two groups of adhesives. Uh, we have the ones that were very good, and we have the ones that were not so good. And there is a huge gap between them. So the better ones were uh, the JB Weld, Weldix, and the Superglue, and those all made for joints that were so strong that in almost all cases it wasn't the adhesive that was failing, but the 3D print. So for the resin parts it would be the 100% solid and 100% info resin part that cracks, you know, somewhere around the joint, often not even at the joint itself. And with the filament prints, you would see the perimeters get ripped apart. So with these parts, we have three perimeters, and the most outside one uh, is where the adhesive stuck to, and that gets ripped away from the rest of the part. So these adhesives, JB Weld, Weldix, or I guess any two-part epoxy, 5-8 epoxy, something like that, and super glue, those are adhesives that I would say you can use for pretty much everything and they're not going to be the weakest link. The weakest link is going to be your 3D print. And with all these three adhesives, it didn't matter whether we were gluing up a PLA, PTG or resin. And all those combinations worked really well. Even the PTG was not a problem at all with adherence. So within those adhesives, it really comes down to which one of those is the most convenient for you to use. So for example, with the super glue, because it is a bit thinner and it requires that, that pressure to harden, it's not gonna be great if you have an inconsistent gap, if you have something that, you know, like a 3D print, isn't perfectly mating together. In those cases, maybe five minute epoxy is gonna be the better choice. Now, the other group of adhesives is those that had basically no resistance to breaking at all. So that is uh, the VHB, the uh, Fix-All, the you know, cartridge hybrid adhesive, as well as the hot glue. Now, I have to say, these tests are kind of a worst case condition for adhesives that are a bit softer, because these are all bending actions, so you're peeling off from the top to the bottom, and it's not loading the entire joint at once, like you would have if you, know, you have something that is uh, a larger contact patch that has more of a tensile stress instead of a, a bent force applied to it. So even though these three adhesives gave me basically no resistance to breaking, I don't think they're really useless in the context of 3D prints. For example, uh, the VHB tape and the Fix-All, they make for joints that are you know, somewhat flexible still, that have some amount of give. So if you have a joint that uh, needs to absorb vibrations or has some movement in it and a you know, harder adhesive might end up cracking, then these adhesives especially the, the Fix-All, this is still like almost silicone-like, um, that is gonna make for a very good use case uh, where it's gonna be absorbing those vibrations. And again, usability really plays into this. Uh, for example, hot glue, even though it didn't make for the strongest joints, it's just super easy to use. You squeeze some on there, you press the parts together for five seconds, and it's hard, it is set. Also, you can use it as a gap filler. It's just a, a really universal tool. So even though these three adhesives, hot glue, fix-all, and the VHB tape, don't make for the strongest joints in my test case, I do think they have their applications. For example, the Polymate 3D speaker enclosure that I designed and printed, 
I glued that together with the fix all. And in that case, that was a good option to glue it together. So really what it comes down to is if you need a strong joint, you don't need any specialty adhesives. You can use off the shelf two-part epoxy, MMA, any sort of that adhesive. Um, or even super glue with filler that works perfectly as well. And then for the weaker adhesives, there are use cases for that too. But really, you don't have to worry about whether you're gluing up resins, PTG, PLA, um, all the adhesives worked pretty much equally well on each of those materials. So I hope you learned something from this video and maybe this made your next project a bit easier and uh, just allowed you to use a bit more design freedom when you can just glue stuff together and not have to worry about it. Um, if you did enjoy the video, you know, do the usual, get subscribed, thumbs up, uh, share the video. And I do wanna extend a thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and on YouTube memberships. I know it's been a while to get this studio set up, but if you wanna support this channel and enable me to keep making this sort of content, then, you know, check that out. Check out Patreon, YouTube memberships. Uh, in any case, thank you for watching, keep on making, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.